we're back on the trail of the Yorkshire Ripper and today um, I want to focus on two earlier attacks before the first official murder of Will McCann in October of uh, 75. I want to talk about the attack on Anna Rogalski in Keithley and the attack on Olive Smelt over in Halifax and we're just on our way over now to Keithley to see the first attack site. So guys, we're here in Keithley Town Centre and just behind me is the old Ritz uh, Cinema. Uh, today it's a bingo hall, it used to be the uh, gala and now it's the buzz. And uh, it's just at the back of this cinema where an attack took place by Peter Sutcliffe in July 1975, that of Irish-born 36-year-old Anna Rogalski. And we're going to have a look at that today and see what's going on. Thirty-six-year-old Anna Rogalski uh, has been out in Bradford earlier in the evening um, at a place called Bibby's Nightclub. Some of you guys may have heard of it. It was just off Manningham Lane in Bradford. At about twelve thirty, um, she decided to get a lift with two Jamaican boys, and they drove her back to her house in Highfield Lane in Keithley, not too far away. At about one o'clock in the morning, a bit worse for wear for drink, she decided she was going to call on her boyfriend. Jeff Hughes, who lived just at the end of this alleyway, actually, in uh, North Queen Street. They had a bit of a stormy relationship. Uh, apparently, they had a fall out that night. She may have went round to try and patch things up, or he may have taken something from the house, and she decided to go around and get it. So, But she was in a bit of a mood anyway. So she set off from her house at 1 a.m. Uh, takes about half an hour, and around at 1.30 uh, a.m., she is um, arriving at the side of the Ritz Cinema here in Keithley. So guys, we're here at the back of the old Ritz Cinema, uh, now the Gallo Bingo Hall, and it's on North Queen Street. And we're busy following the route that Anna Rogalski would have taken on the night of the 5th of July, 1975. She would have came around this corner here. And as she came around the corner, she heard a voice, a man in darkness. He said, uh, fancy it. And she said, not on your life. And she continued walking to her boyfriend's house. So as she came round, she came down this alleyway and proceeded to bang loudly on the door of Jeff Hughes's house. Now Jeff was probably drunk. He probably was ignoring her. Uh, she was drunk. She wasn't in the mood. And she kept banging away at the windows and the doors. And eventually, in her frustration, she uh, took off her shoe and proceeded to smash the window uh, off the house. And of course, then she took off quite sharply, but she had probably forgotten about the stranger she had encountered just over here by the side of the cinema. And as she walked out, she came out over the side, she saw the man again. The man said, fancy it again. She said, not on your life. She may have attempted to try and hit him with her arm, but as she walked across, Suckliff then smashed a hammer onto the back of her skull and she fell down here at the front of the alleyway. So Sutcliffe uh, dragged her through the alleyway and uh, put her body round about this area here. He pulled up her blouse and in this attack he may have hit her twice more. The poor woman had three severe fractures to the skull. He pulled up her blouse and he cut her three times, seven inch long incisions uh, below her belly button, her navel. He then went up and sliced her a uh, further seven times on the abdomen and they weren't completely deep cuts she was very very lucky and no doubt he would have probably cut her deeper possibly killed her 
but luckily a neighbor in nearby 10 Henry Street, and you'll see it over here, he heard the commotion. There may have been a struggle, some noise, a scream perhaps. He comes to the door, the window, and he shouts out what's going on. Sutcliffe understandably panics and he flees the scene. Um, luckily enough, Anna Rogalski then was saved. She didn't die. Uh, she's one of the few who survived the attack. Now, uh, she lay here for 40 minutes because the neighbor, uh, upon hearing no more noises, went back inside, went back to bed. And around about 2.20 in the morning, a passerby noticed the body lying here. They got her to Airedale Hospital and uh, her life was saved. But it all happened here in this alleyway. Okay guys, we're here at the very, very busy Booth Town Road. It's tea time, so I apologize for the noise. Hopefully it won't last too long. We're going to talk about the night of the 15th of August, 1975. The attack on 46-year-old Olive Smelt. Now, the attack begins roughly here, at this spot, just off the Booth Town Road, at Hilly Hill, beside Woodside Grove and Woodside Road. If we look over here, we we'll see some of these old shops. At one time, there would have been a fish and chip shop that stood here once. And on that particular night, all the smell had been out drinking. She had came back and uh, she got some fish and chips and decided to go home to her husband, Harry, down at number 16, Woodside Mount. Sutcliffe was out drinking as well with his friend Trevor Birdsell. They came up, they parked the car just next to the fish and chip shop. And Sutcliffe saw all the smelt disappear around this corner. She was going to take a shortcut through the alleyways that led to her house. He told Trevor Birdsell to stay in the car. Apparently he reached down, picked something up, went out of the car and ran round the back of the buildings. Now, as Olive Smelt made her way through the alleyways of Woodside Grove, just over here, Sutcliffe was mirroring her on the other side of Woodside Road, this one here. He had left Trevor Birdsell in the car. He was now making his way down this road, looking in at each section to see where she was. So, as Olive Smelt came down the alleyway, Sutcliffe had caught up with her. He said, weather letting us down, put her off guard. He then produced a ball pin hammer, and just as she reached the end of the alleyway, just here, he hit her on the back of the head. She fell forward, her body half in and half out of the alleyway, just there. He then bent down, and with a second blow, hit her again on the back of the head. As she lay on the ground, Sutcliffe then bent down, pulled down her knickers, and then made two 68 inch long slash marks on top of her buttocks. Now, he probably would have cut deeper, possibly killed her, but for a courting couple that by the end of the alleyway, when they were sitting in their car just over here, where this blue car is, they saw something happen over in the alleyway, just over here, and they thought what it was. They turned the lights on, this frightened them off, and he escaped the scene. Olive Smelt was then taken to Halifax Infirmary, then over to Leeds General Infirmary, where her husband Harry was told not to expect her to survive. Her skull had been crushed, like the doctor said, like a coconut shell. <laughs> 